hi there is this thing on <laughs> so uh i'm 59 years old almost 60 so i'm over 59 and a half which means that i can pull money out of my 401k account without an extra 10 percent penalty tax penalty um if you're unaware of what a 401k is you can just look it up on youtube or google or whatever that's Basically, when you have a full-time job and you're putting money towards retirement, is what that is. And the idea is um, to uh, pull your money out after you retire, so you're in a, most likely a, a lower tax bracket. That's the, the probability. Anyway, uh, my name is Greg. I live alone. I used to be married for a good 15 years or more. I've been married twice. Four grown kids. Um, I used to live up in Indiana for a good 30 years in, in the Indianapolis area. Um, and I moved back down here to Florida where I grew up as a kid. And uh, I specifically decided to, to find a place in Lakeland because that's where my parents live. And so I'm down here. Um, my sister also lives down the road. So close to my actual family and my kids, of course, are up in Indiana still, although one is in another country and um, I don't keep in touch with them all the time. That's just the way it is. Kids grow up, they move away, right? So that's just the way it is. I have a, uh, a religious background, Christian, uh, denominational. Uh, both of my grandparents were pastors my dad was a pastor i chose not to be a pastor because i uh, looked closer and was a bit cynical and also based on um, one of my grandfather's behaviors it made me cynical and uh, less trusting of pastors let's put it that way and uh, so i decided I, I did not want to be part of that group of people Instead, I chose to uh, be a pencil pusher at a desk. So I got an education, college education, got my college degree, and uh, got a full-time job at an insurance company and did that for at least 10 years. And then I worked at the state of Indiana for another 10 years. And uh, after about 30 years or so total, um, I um, moved back down to Florida. So here I am. I don't work full time. I uh, substitute teach occasionally. Uh, I also have this other uh, gig kind of thing where I help this. I, I'm, I am the help among lots of others that uh, set up and tear down uh, concert stuff, you know, like the speakers and uh, the lights, stages, all that stuff. Um, but I, I, I find that to be brutal, really just not so much the work is that hard to, specifically, but there's no intelligence necessary. You don't need a drop of education and the people that are telling you what to do, they're rude. They're young, like in their twenties and they're rude to you. Even if you're older, they're still rude to you. And, um, you know, having a college education and being, uh, uh, having, I guess I was an officer in the army. I don't think I'm an officer now, although I could be, but I'm almost 60 years old, but I, so I don't think that would work. I'm too old for military type stuff, but I was, I mean, that's, that's the whole respect issue. You know, I mean, once you've done all this stuff, you worked hard, you got into college, you actually graduated from college, you went into the military, you, you got, you know, you, you uh, went through basic training and all that stuff on the in uh, the non-commissioned side, then you went to the commission side and you became an army officer, and then you, uh, you got married and you had kids, you got a full-time job, you bought a new car, you did everything right, you know? And so at this point, I don't think I should be treated as if I'm some kind of a high school dropout who accomplished absolutely nothing in my life. And so I just, I really don't feel like being insulted by kids <laughs> that don't have the proper upbringing to treat an adult right. 
So I don't think I'm going to do those anymore. I'll probably go back to substitute teaching um, just because, I don't know. I don't ne necessarily need the money. I do need the socialization, though. Although, you know, hanging out with a bunch of teenagers isn't really socialization. It's more me teaching them how to socialize versus arguing and fighting and all that stuff. And so that's that's kind of me in a nutshell. I, I do uh, some uh, guitar type stuff. Like I have a guitar right here. Let me grab my pick. Hold on. And I'm too lazy. I'm, I'm very lazy, okay? I mean, I worked hard in my life, but now I've become, la become lazy. I don't, I'm not going to edit this. So if I get off the screen, well, that's the way it is. But anyway, I'm left-handed. This is one of my five or six guitars. And that's my Boss Katana 2 over there that you're hearing. So I do this, you know, I play around with this thing. I'll put it right down. Got to turn it down and then put it down. So it doesn't make noise. So that's one of my things that I do just for fun, all by myself. And the funny thing is, in my little neighborhood here, there's actually an over 55 community where everybody is age 55 or older. Um, you might find some spouses that are younger than that because that's allowed down to 45, I think. But um, this is summer, and so most people are up north, and so it's pretty quiet. Um, but I noticed that even older people, they can be pretty grumpy and grouchy and, and uh, very controlling, rude. Um, and I didn't expect that. I, I thought that uh, older people were going to become wise and graceful and kind and generous and all that stuff. That's just not true. I and mean, It's unfortunate. And it might just be the fact that I'm in Florida. Polk County, not known for its social grace, <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, and maybe it's just me, you know, maybe I'm more sensitive or something, maybe I'm just expecting too much, uh, I, you know, I can only see out of my eyes, right, and so, um, yeah, but when you move to a totally different state uh, where you don't know anybody other than your family members, um, it's it's kind of hard to, to find friends, uh, especially when people don't want to socialize with you or if they get immediately offended if you say anything at all that they don't like, right? Um, and then you have the other side where you have people that have m seemingly mental problems where they start talking and they refuse to be quiet. Like you just sit there and listen to them for a good 10 minutes solid, right? As if it's a YouTube video, but it's not. They're sitting right next to you and they refuse to be quiet. Yeah, that can be frustrating. So I need to kind of figure out what I want to focus on. Uh, I can go lots of directions. I can go to the religious side. I can uh, tell you what scripture verses mean that are in the Old and New Testament and the Bible. I can you know, explain how a real spiritual experience feels on the inside and on the outside. I can, I can tell you how um, it feels to have a, a cognitive dissonance where you know something isn't true, but you don't want to let it go, that sort of thing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm educated as a school teacher. My education is in sociology and secondary education. So I have two college degrees, two BS degrees. Um, I have four raised kids, so I have plenty of parenting experience. Um, but I just have to decide which way I want to go as far as the videos. So if if anybody ever watches this, just throw some comments down on, on what you'd like to hear more about. Um, and hopefully I get better than this. The, the main idea right now is just to actually make a video and then uh, try to be consistent. That's my main issue. I'll, I'll do one or two and then I'll stop for months. And so my main goal here is to at least make two per week and throw, up, throw them up there on YouTube and get that to be consistent. So I'm doing two per week. I don't work full time. I don't have kids. I don't have a wife. I have plenty of time. So there's no reason for me not to do this. Uh, I also have 
and attitude, okay? When it comes to money and doing things for money, that annoys me. So I don't want to feel like I'm doing this for money. I want to be doing this because I want to um, socialize, really, with people. And I want to help them to become more polite. Uh, I want to teach people manners. <laughs> how, how to avoid, you know, the, the, the really mean people. And how to, how to deal with that. You know, how to not get offended. I noticed that the newest generation, uh, they seem to love being offended. I, I'm not sure what's going on. But I want to help people uh, become more emotionally stable so that they can have a conversation without arguing. They can discuss without freaking out with emotions. People can, uh, you know, socialize where they're, you know, they're listening as much as they're talking. And they're actively listening. So they understand what the other person said and they ask questions about it, right? So you actually learn from the other person instead of you and the other people all trying to drown each other out with whatever you want to say and nobody's listening. That really doesn't accomplish a whole lot. And so just, I think, social skills. I mean, I have a degree in sociology and secondary education. So that shows that that has been my consistent concern for several decades since I was in my 20s, probably since I was a, you know, a kid, uh, reading about uh, ancient you know, philosophers and, of course, the Bible with uh, Solomon in uh, uh, Proverbs, a lot of good stuff in there. So anyway, uh, I'm not sure how long this is, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it off now. Again, my name is Greg. Let me know what you think uh, and what, what you would like to hear more about. I, I really do not like the whole idea of trying to push products uh you know the it just feels gross i don't know you know capitalism is an it's a necessary evil because people don't know how to garden but i i would i would prefer where there was no money everybody knows how to garden we all have gardens outside and we have gardens inside like a place where it's actually inside away from all the elements where you can can grow your own garden inside of a room, you know, like a terrarium, whatever they call them. I don't even remember what they call A greenhouse, I guess, is what you call that. Where everybody would have a greenhouse, and they'd grow food inside of there. And then if they had too much of something, they could trade with their neighbors. And so everybody would have plenty of food, and nobody would have to go to the grocery store. You wouldn't have to worry about prices or spending money. You wouldn't have to worry about driving to the store and back. I think that would be awesome. And if families could stay, you know, in the local vicinity so that, it, you know, if you grow old in your 80s or 90s, you can't do the gardening thing anymore. So wouldn't it be nice if your kids or grandkids, you know, learned how to garden and then they would pick up the gardening. You don't need a whole giant farm. You don't need to feed America. Just maybe, you know, yourself and a few other people would be sufficient. And if everybody did that or most people did that, uh, I think that would really help solve our economic problems where people didn't go in debt. You didn't have all these unnecessary things like cars going everywhere. We don't need to travel everywhere. That should not, you know, entertainment and travel should not be our lives, in my opinion. We should get to know our neighbors. We should learn how to garden. We should be more local. We should be off internet. We should socialize face to face with people and we should learn how to converse in a civilized, polite way. So, all right, that's all I got. Hope you like.